as we get comfortably seated in any meditative posture, on a chair or on the bed or the yoga mats, sitting down on the floor on a yoga mat, always prefer to any other option. With spine upright, shoulders start back, eyes gently closed, back of the head in line with the spine. Let us look for our pulse on our wrists for Samavritti Pranayam. With the right hand's four fingertips, let's look for the beat of our heart on the left wrist. Increasing our sensitivity to a point where on all four fingers, the index, the middle, the ring and the little fingers pads, we can feel the beating of our heart at the pulse on the left hand's wrist. As soon as we feel it, we inhale to a count of seven beats and exhale to a count of nine with intensified awareness. The inhalations up to the count of seven have to fill up our lungs completely. The exhalation till nine have to empty our lungs completely. Equal breath. Although the count of the exhalation is two more than the count of the inhalation. Samavritti pranayam. Feel a connect of your pulse, your breath the inhalations and hence the filling up of the lungs in what is called Purak, where we are utilizing all the three lobes of the lungs. Feel the connect between what is called Rechak in the exhalations. Feel a connect of your every heartbeat. 16 of them currently till we start the next inhale. Seven beats on Puraks, nine on Rechaks, and back to the inhale at one. Last round. Now, as soon as you finish the count of nine in your exhalation, hold your elbows after taking your fingertips off from your wrist. Hold your elbows. And inhaling, lift the elbows. Exhaling, drop them. Done. lot of complaints recently for back problems. Besides doing a one-to-one -one where I immediately repair your back with your foot reflexology, calf uh, massage, tying the crepe bandage, etc. There are times when just sitting at home, if you have the bolster that I've always been talking about, this is my bolster, right? You can just immediately reverse a back problem by sitting and I'm going to send you this video clip, all of you on the group, on the chat. So don't worry, you don't need to keep a bolster ready. All right, for now. You're going to sit in Bhagda Konasan, which is the cobbler pose. How is Bhagda Konasan? This is Bhagda Konasan. All right, the cobbler pose. 
this is Bhakta Konasan. So you do a Namaste in it. And you then, keeping your tailbone at the edge of the bolster in Bhakta Kon Asan, with a little height where your head is going to rest, you're just going to lie down. You saw the pillow, cushion, towel, heap, whatever you want to keep. Don't make a big fuss of anything. Is exactly under my head. My hands are up and my elbows are held. This is for your back. And you do abdominal breaths. Inhale, inflate the abdomen. Exhale, bring it back. Seven abdominal breaths. As you lie on the bolster, the entire vertebral column. When you come up, you're not going to come up suddenly and with a jerk. You're going to come up slowly, open up the Bhagdakon Asan. All right, this is going to be this is going to be just a small one and a half minute to two minute video clip that I'm going to be posting on the chat. Uh, some or someone or the other comes at home or on my studio, literally with a huge back problem, like a paraplegic, huh? And I give him a session and he's absolutely okay. This is not the only cure and the solution, but it is one of the cures and the solutions which will at least get you back into action. If you take bed rest, you will continue taking bed rest for days, weeks, forever. All right. Bolster, hard one. Uh, towels, two or three folded or a hard pillow just where the head is. Cobbler pose, that is Bhagda Konasan. At the tailbone, you touch the pillow here. And then lie down with hands up. If you have a frozen shoulder, you can even use one hand. Lie down and do seven abdominal breaths and then just breathe normally. Come back. Let's continue with our breath work now. Let's do Raj Kapot Ujjayi. That is the Guturgu of the pigeons. <laughs> this is not going to be easy for a beginner. An Om chant in exhalations. Let your Om chants have a very good throw. Don't worry about, don't be conscious, don't worry about disturbing people in the house. Have a big throw of the Om chant, a smooth one. Even in the Raj Kapot, the rubbing, the friction in the throat is very important. And the rhythm in the friction is very important. If you hear me. <laughs> in my rub, in my sound, in my inhalation, and I've held the inhalation yet in Antar Kumbhak. There is a rhythm, which maybe some of you beginners may not have. Raj Kapot Ujjayi has several benefits. And I'm still holding my inhalation in Antar Kumbha because I'm utilizing the inhaled oxygenated air which I took in through Raj Kapot Ujjay. And I'm now going to start exhaling in an Om Chant. Om. One more round, Raj Kapot Ujjayi. It's so easy to do this during the monsoon. It's literally as if wind is lashing on your sliding glasses or the windows outside. Then bring the palms on the knees, elbows are out. Any seated posture, if you have a knee problem, keep your legs straight. 
to do Shwan Pranayam. This can also be done in Vajrasana or Virasana, the warrior or the adamantine pose. Shwan Pranayam, the panting dog, tongue out, eyes in Nasagraha Mudra. <laughs> Continue in Shwan Pranayam. Don't use any other variations because it involves inhalations and exhalations. And because Shwan Pranayam can improve your cleanser called Kapalbhati and your Pranayam, the energizing and vitalizing Pranayam, one of them being Bhastrika, it will improve both to bring them into resonance, into rhythm, into more immunity, into more strength. Surfacing their benefits. Which benefits? Those of Kapalbhati, those of Bhastrika. Shwan Pranayam can be done for a long time. You can look me up on YouTube also for that. And then if it is the morning time and you've still not brushed, it's a very good idea to use your saliva over pimples, acne, pigmentation, darkening of the skin, eye strains, macular degeneration, dark circles, wrinkles, etc. On finishing Swashwan Pranayam, we do alternate nostril, Kapal, Bhati and Bhastrika. Right hand in Nasagraha Mudra. Close the right nostril. Do a Kapalbhati exhalation. Close the left with the ring fingertip. Do a Bhastrika inhale exhale. One each. This is brilliant if you are able to notice, to tell the difference between the abdominal workout and the lung workout. Watch how abdominal workout happens with kapal bhatis, where you're exhaling, pulling the abdomen in when the right nostril is throwing out the air. Your lungs fill and empty when your right nostril inhales and exhales. Left nostril is exhaling in kapal bhati and then right nostril is doing inhale, exhale in bhastrika. Now, reverse this. Reverse this means with the ring fingertip, close the left nostril. Exhale from the right. Close the right with your thumb. Inhale, exhale from the left. Are you noticing the duality and the play? between the abdominal exhalation in Kapal Bhati and the thoracic inhale and exhale in the Bhastrika alternately, in alternate nostrils. One is a cleanser, has innumerable benefits. One is a pranayam, has innumerable benefits. Last three sets. And we now come into Agni Sar. Palms on the knees, elbows out like wings. Inhale fully. Exhaling, pull the abdomen in. Come into a chin lock. Apply Mahaban. The lower lock, middle lock, upper lock. Mahaban. Too many benefits of Mahaband. Now the abdominal band will come out, go in, come out, go in, come out, go in, in Agni Sar. The other two will stay. Mulban, Jalandar band will stay. Udyan band will not stay. It will be in, out, in, out, in, out. 
I'm using my index finger and middle finger to show you the movement. Second round. I've cured years old constipation, abdominal, stomach, pancreas related, gallbladder related, liver related, intestine related issues with just this combination. But the combination has to happen. There has to be a lotus pose Padmasana. There has to be a Mahabandh. If you notice by now, your Mahabandh could have opened up. No problem. You have to come into the lock again. Third round. Inhale fully. Apply Mahabandh. All three. Hold the exhalation. Discontinue the practice. Agnis are with all the other, all the three buns in a Padmasana. If you are pretty much new to it, should not be done for more than three times because it has a lot of hidden dangers. But it has more benefits, so that it should be done. We now come to what is called Brahmari Pranayam. And we're going to do it with a mudra called Shanmukhi Mudra. We're going to do totally three rounds. In Brahmari Pranayam, you inhale completely. You fill yourself head to toes. You don't fill yourself only the lungs. Now when I'm inhaling, I'm full into my every cell, tendon, ligament, nerve. Even the pores of my bones. I want to address not only sleep disorders. I'm holding my exhalation throughout when I'm talking. My bony pores. I want to address reversing rheumatic arthritis. I want to address reversing osteoporosis. So my inhalation has to be full from head to toes. And then I come into shutting my five senses. That of sight very gently. That of smell either side of the nostrils. That of taste, either side of the tongue. That of touch, either side of the chin. And I plug my ears closed, do a humming sound, exhaling, feeling the vibrations in the frontal part of the face. No talking to you in Antar Kumbha. Hmm. You do the humming sound, plugging your ears closed. Brahmari pranayam is not only to reverse sleep disorders, insomnia, sleep apnea, snoring. It is also to come out of addictions, to lessen the cravings for black coffee, alcohol, tobacco, smoking, etc., you will notice after doing several Brahmari pranayams in Shanmukhi Mudra, suddenly that craving, that need to lean on any addiction will reduce. Try it for yourselves. Hmm. Plug your ears closed, making a humming sound, exhaling. And don't rush the next one. 
This has no contraindications. You can do any number of Brahmari pranayams with Shanmukhi mudra. It has nothing, neither the mudra, nor the humming, nor the pranayam has any contraindications. Interlock hands behind you now. Interlace the fingers to do the obliques. Just three sets. Right elbow up. Inhale. All the way back. Feel the stretch in your armpits. Exhale. Elbow to knee. Come back. Left elbow up. Exhale. Elbow to knee. Three sets of Bhastrika in Padmasan in your obliques. Full inhale, your puraks have to be filling you up head to toe, not only the lungs. Full exhale, your exhales have to be completely throwing out all the used, expended, utilized air. Discontinue the practice after three sets to do any breath work of your choice. Whatever breath work you do, regardless of whether it is lower, middle, upper, that is abdominal, thoracic or clavicular, any category, or whether it is energizing, vitalizing, stabilizing, cooling, balancing or tranquilizing, check which breath work you have done. After the, ses uh, the session has ended, write it down. See how the mind is giving you signals to heal yourselves. See how your own Sahaj Atma Swarup, your own pure divinity guides you to make you yourself a Param Guru. With Guru Purnima fast approaching, make sure you Treat yourself, your own pure divinity, Sahaj, Atmaswaru, your own ultimate teacher, master, guru and mentor. Continue doing the breath work that you are getting signals of to be done. Excellent. Keep it going. Last round. I'm seeing uh, Kapal Bhati. I'm seeing Kapal Bhati again. I'm seeing Bhastrika with hand movement. I'm seeing Kapal Bhati, Anulom Vilom, Bhastrika again, Taku Prana, Chandra Bedan, wow, Anulom Vilom, Kapal Bhati, Anulom Vilom with Ujjayi, Anulom Vilom, Anulom Vilom, Bhastrika, Viloma, Anulom Vilom, Anulom Vilom. Feather touch, Sheetali. Oh, wow. Anyone who's not written what they did, please write it. With that, waiting. Thank you, thank you, thank you.